Well, to nobody's surprise, the Democratic Party establishment, along with their allies in the media, are playing the blame game and they're trying to pin the loss in Virginia on the left. I already touched on this in uh, the video that I did where I talked about the election results, so I thought that it might be beneficial to just uh, talk about uh, more that has come out. So this right here is an actual mailer that was sent out by the Democratic Party of Virginia. So this looks like it is an advertisement for Glenn Youngkin, right? Trying to tie him to Donald Trump. Glenn has my complete and total endorsement. They said, this guy is like Donald Trump. I said, thank you very much. President Trump represents so much of why I'm running. So you think that this was a mailer that Glenn Youngkin himself sent out. But if you look closely, the Democratic Party sent this out. The Democratic Party sent out an advertisement for the Republican, for their opponent, thinking that this was an own when Donald Trump is still very much popular within the Republican Party. The fact that they thought this was an own shows you how out of touch they are. Now, another tweet from Dave Wasserman. So just to kind of put everything into perspective, uh, in New Jersey, GOP legislative candidates outperformed the 2020 Biden-Trump margin in their districts by a margin of 10.8 points. 10.8. That's a swing that took place in a year. If that swing were superimposed nationally, Republicans would pick up 44 House seats in 2022 before even factoring in redistricting. So assuming Democrats actually do fail to deliver and they've already seen this 10.8 swing against them. I mean, imagine the bloodbath that it's going to be by the time we get to 2022. It's just, it's disaster. It is disaster. And Democrats should see this as a wake-up call. But of course, they're not ever going to admit that they did anything wrong. You know, it's not that Terry McAuliffe ran a bland campaign and wasn't offering voters anything. It's that the left pushed Biden too much to the left. It just it's it's nonsensical. Um, and we have this hot take from uh, Jake Tapper of CNN. Now, this is the only video that I could find of this, so it's not the best audio quality. But let's listen to what he has to say. So, what, one other thing that I'm hearing from uh, moderate Democratic lawmakers this evening who are obviously panicked, uh, not, the, not the least of which reason is they're the ones who are most likely to feel the effects of this anti-Democratic, capital D Democratic uh, wind continues to blow next year. One of the things I'm hearing is that their voters, and don't shoot the messenger, I'm passing on what I'm hearing from somebody talking about what their voters feel, their voters feel looked down upon. And I'm not talking about Republican voters looking down, down um, feeling that they're being looked down upon. I'm talking about moderate to conservative Democrats feeling that they're looked down upon by pundits, by progressives, by other people who say that, uh, who, who if they express a feeling that maybe the schools should open, even if the teachers don't want us to want them to, uh, maybe teachers should listen to parents more often when it comes to what they're hearing. This is from a Virginian. Uh, maybe Joe Manchin has a point when he says uh, $1.5 trillion or $1.7 trillion is a lot of money. Let's take our time with it. Let's not rush it. They think, uh, that makes sense to me. And they don't want to be insulted uh, by progressives called whatever names for that. Yeah. So that's the analysis that we get. It just it's baffling to me that you can be paid millions of dollars every single year to do political commentary and come to that conclusion. Uh, nonetheless, uh, another bright mind, Sally Albright says, I hope people understand this. Bernie's messaging destroyed us tonight just like it took out 12 sitting Democrats in 2020. This madness has to stop. And as Farron Cousins <laughs> rightfully puts it, I could eat my computer keyboard and shit out a random assortment of letters and it would still, and it still wouldn't be as idiotic as this take right here. And that's exactly it because it is idiotic. But this was the narrative that was predetermined and Manchin of course is trying to use it to his advantage. Manchin says, unbelievable Virginia results validate concerns over spending package jesus christ there's a lot of fucking pop-ups and auto playing videos uh the hill you should probably fix this because it's extremely fucking annoying moving on now i've got to share aiden smith because he said basically the most accurate thing ever uh being right sucks honestly 
He said, uh, he said this on November 1st, mainstream press if McAuliffe wins tomorrow. Centrism is the future of the Democratic Party. Mainstream press if McAuliffe loses. Radical socialists cause Virginia voters to reject Democrats. Exactly. But as Mehdi Hassan puts it, a centrist Democratic president is in the White House. A centrist Democratic candidate is running for Virginia governor. Two centrist Democratic senators have held up the party's agenda for months. So if Dems lose in VA today, sorry, it ain't on the progressives. No way. And he's exactly right about that. Listen, I think that what's very clear is that people are frustrated because no party is delivering. That's why we keep going back and forth. Democrats, Republicans, Democrats, Republicans. If you want to stop the pendulum from swinging back and forth, Democrats need to use this limited window of opportunity to actually deliver for people. Now, I don't know how many of them will get that message. I don't know how many of them know that but are rejecting it. But either way, if they don't actually deliver and if people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are allowed to hold back the party, if Joe Manchin or, or Joe Biden rather continues to give them a pass and not try to bully them into submission, Democrats will be wiped out. The results in 2022 may be worse than they were on Tuesday night. You have to materially improve people's lives. If you don't do that, people aren't going to support you. And the thing about this race in Virginia is it should have, in theory, been an easy win for Terry McAuliffe. This is a state that went to Joe Biden by, I think, 10 points. But to see that large of a swing within a year, that spells disaster for Democrats. And they have to change things. They have to turn it around and actually improve people's lives in a meaningful way. Joe Biden can do a lot of things. He can cancel student debt. But he's not doing that. Democrats can actually try to do um, more than the bare minimum for once. But as you see with, uh, for example, their pres prescription drug negotiation uh, provision in the Build Back Better Act, which will probably be gutted anyway too, uh, they won't even do the bare minimum. They'll do less than the bare minimum and then they'll water that down even more. So, you know, this is something that um, they, they are never going to learn from, right? Republicans can literally just shit their pants on a stage and scream critical race theory over and over again, and they're still going to win. Because even though that message is incoherent, it's something, right? They are preying on white grievance. They are trying to fear monger about critical race theory. And rather than getting dragged down by these non-issues, Democrats could actually deliver deliver on policy, deliver with a clear economic message that is concise and will affect a lot of people. But they, they never do that. So instead, they uh, pivot, deflect, and they blame the left. Um, look, I'm going to make a prediction right now. Uh, and I'm not great at predictions, but um, this is an easy one. Uh, in 2022, assuming that Democrats do indeed get wiped out and they lose at least one chamber of Congress, which I think is likely. They're probably going to lose the House and the Senate. Who knows? But in the event that happens, who do you think is going to be blamed? I think you know the answer to that. I think you know the answer to that. It doesn't matter how Democrats campaign. It doesn't necessarily matter what Republicans say or do. Who do you think will be the scapegoat? And what do you think the takeaway for corporate Democrats will be? We just went too far left and we have to move closer to the center. It is a never-ending disappointment to cover politics, but so long as me participating in politics at least makes them irritated, I think it's it's worth the sacrifice. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's how bad I am. But that's where we're at. It feels like we're never gonna actually meaningfully affect change because you know direct action doesn't seem to have an impact on politicians. You see the way that Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin are being confronted. They're not changing their minds. We saw last year Black Lives Matter protesters out in the streets for months. We had international Black Lives Matter protests that were catalyzed by U.S. Black Lives Matter protests after the murder of George Floyd. Congress didn't do anything. We uh, give Democrats the majority. We pursue change through electoralism. And we can't even get a $15 an hour minimum wage. We can't even get $10,000 of student loan debt canceled, which is what Joe Biden ran on. It just feels like nothing is going to be conducive to change. So it's really easy for young people to check out of the process and feel doomer. But here's the thing. Even if 
the obstacles that are in front of us seem insurmountable, even if we're most likely to lose every single time, I think that we have a moral obligation to at least try in spite of the odds. Because when we have things like the future of democracy in America and the planet at stake, uh, you know, no matter how hard it is, we just we keep going. To be a leftist in America means you will suffer more losses than uh, victories, and you're always going to be blamed for the failures of the corporate Democratic Party. But at the end of the day, so long as you keep fighting and you keep going and you try to find something to hang on to, that's important. I don't know what you're hanging on to. Maybe a single race. Look at the local level victories that the DSA endorsed candidates had. Hang on to something and just keep going because they want to beat us down and it's working. They're beating us down and they're going to win more often than not. But as long as we keep going, then at a minimum, we're irritating them and getting under their skin. They want us to go away. And even if we don't win, at least we could fuck with them. That's where we're at. But it's something. That's that's what we need, something to hang on to. And uh, that's that's what I'm going to hang on to. Irritating corporate Democrats and Republicans. So it's something. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast, sad.